So let's deal with exercise as medicine. I, I, you know, when you head into an office, you know, you know, how, what does your physician, what does your physician tell you to do? Um, a lot of times they do tell you to get, get to moving, to do more exercise, if you will. Well, that's about as helpful as you need to um, watch your diet or something like that. And, and a lot of times you just don't know what to do. And that's one of the reasons, obviously, you're here in cardiac rehab is for us to, to, um, to help teach. But that's, yeah, I'm going to kind of take up this whole topic of exercise and activity today. Hippocrates uh, uh, gets quoted as um, saying a lot of different things, but uh, he never really said um, exercise is medicine. But he said this real complex statement. He said, I say then, this is the question, the most excellent one, and allied to many others, some of the most vital importance in the art. And for that, it can contribute much to the recovery of the sick and to the preservation of health in the case of gymnastic exercises and is useful to whatever one to, chooses, one wishes to apply it. And of course, I wish he did just say, um, exercise is medicine. But this is a complex quote, and obviously he was recognizing the, the use of activity and exercise for the preservation of health, as well as the recovery from, from illnesses. Well, there was a movement that was um, begun 2007 um, by the American College of Sports Medicine, and it was Exercise as Medicine, or E-E-I-M. And um, with this, it was mostly not only for people to begin doing more regular exercise, but even for physicians to begin this chat and talk with patients. Um, so when you do go to a physician's office, how, do, how is the best way to start the conversation? You know, an easy thing is to ask people, well, what are you doing as far as physical activity each week? And you'll hear, you know, some people say, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Or, or no, I, I have a regular routine walk. I get out every morning at 7.30 and I, I do this. Or, and, um, you know, how often do, do people do this activity? Uh, what do they like to do? This is a good conversation with somebody. You know, this is what I like to do. Is that, that okay? Um, and and um, and why? Why 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 even get out there and do that? What is the why? You know, with with all of this. Well, clearly, the general recommendations are for. Um, let's rank this. Yeah, that's that's out there. The the 2008 recommendations for physical activity for Americans starts out with the youth, um, and when you look at it, you recognize just how much American youth are not getting an hour a day of vigorous physical activity. Number one, that is just they are not getting an hour in. The recommendation for adults is 30 minutes, about five times a week of both kind of a moderate and at times a little bit more vigorous activity combined with two days a week of some type of muscle strengthening. And we'll get into resistance uh, act, weights or bands, different things that, that work the muscles. We need more movement. We need more use of the muscle. What we found out here with our um, cardiac rehab this past year with the BIA measurements is that people have low muscle states, high fat states, and unfortunately low muscle in the legs. We're just not using our legs. And it is, it, it's, it's almost across the board that we see this, this low muscle in the leg. And we're gonna talk more of muscle here because anytime we're doing physical activity, we're using those muscles. Well, what is, what does moderate intensity activity mean? Well, it means that as you're doing that activity, you can talk, but you may not be able to sing. You, you may not want me to sing, but, but you can still do those activities while talking with someone else. So if someone is walking with you, 
you know, you can have conversation. Uh, you're, uh, this can be things, um, activities such as the brisk walking, um, slow biking, doubles tennis, um, just basically getting out, even chores at home, the, the working in the yard and, and, and gardening is a form of moderate intensity activity. Vigorous activity, you may not be able to continue talking to that individual. You're having to breathe more. You're, having, you're really activating not only your, your lungs, but your, all of your muscles. And, and at the same time, you're, you actually are speeding the heart rate likely a lot more. And these are activities like jogging, fast biking, singles tennis, um, and uh, of course, what I like to do, lap swimming. Uh, so so um, swimming, uh, we'll, we'll, I will, I'll definitely address water and, and swimming. But we need movement. We, movement is power, and movement enhances our health. And um, we should do low impact activity as much as possible, things that are not really going to be, be you know, uh, create an inflammation to our joints. Uh, we do need that mild to moderate level of cardio. And when we do talk about cardio, we're really saying aerobics. And, and we'll, we'll mention more, um, not vigorous intensity, but, but, but this mild to moderate intensity. Um, we need stretching. We need balance. And our goal not only is, is enhancing health, but avoiding injury you know, along the way. So an exercise plan needs to be put together. And you can, you know, at least here in cardiac rehab, they'll put together the, the, the individual treatment plan uh, each month, and we'll adjust that each month. And, and uh, listen to your body while you're there. Tell people if you're not feeling well or something is your jo certain joints are not, not doing well. Um, you know, tell somebody, um, you know, you let someone know what you can and cannot to do. Don't just, you know, have someone say you're to do this and then you're like, you know, I really don't like doing that, you know. Well, what do you like to do? You know, well, if you can't do this, we'll do this. And so those types of activities, I think, can be adjusted. We need SMART goals. And what are SMART goals? Well, they need to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and, and time-bound. Um, specific things. Obviously, I want you to walk on the treadmill, um, you know, and, and that being the specific, I want you to lift or do this particular circuit of weights. Um, it needs to be measurable. Well, well, measurable, you know, how fast, how, how much time were you on that, um, how much weight, what were, what's your usual weight that you lift, what is your maximal that you can lift so that we're not always trying to do the maximal. You want to, and we'll, we'll get in that. Is it achievable? You know, you know, I can't do that. You know, I mean, that, that's, that, don't set a goal that's not even achievable. Um, is it relevant? Is, why, why are we doing this? You know, what is the purpose of this activity? Um, sometimes it's just fun. I mean, a certain, you know, activities are relaxing, they're fun. They get you outdoors. They 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 get you to see things. Um, time, you know, I I I am probably the best or worst, whether whichever way you want to look at it, of setting a goal um, for myself. I set weekly goals. I set monthly goals. I I put things on the calendar that I am working toward this date. You know, and um, so it it creates a bit of drive but it but it it's kind of fun I, I, instead of the date let's say I, I, I want to do senior game swimming this year you know so I, I, it's going to be mid mid March and I want to do three events you know and so I'm training for that along the way well something may come up and I may not be able to do senior games there but the process of heading toward that and getting to that level of being able I'm, I'm doing backstroke this year. I've never done backstroke in a pool for time. It could be very pretty or it could be very ugly. And I'm not sure which way, but, but that's my goal. And, and, it's, and it's something that, that drives you along the way. It's, it'd be nice if you went to a physician and they just 
as a prescription, they checked off, I want you to do the following. This is kind of what we do with the ITP in cardiac rehab. Um, that what type of activity, how often, what type of strength training, how often do you do it, we'll, we'll be doing it. Um, you've seen this scale. This is a relative um, uh, a, a rating of perceived exertion, so an RPE. And it's, it, this is the Borg scale, which starts at six. You know, why don't they start at zero or one? But they start at six, and it goes through 20, so six through 20. And basically, moderate physical activity is between the 11 and 16. So the, the yes. Okay, yes. And, and so it starts at one and then moves up, yeah. And then, the, the of course, the maximal here, you know, when you're getting the intense activity. Um, and so the, the goal, typically, of this scale would be 11 to 16. And so for downstairs, it's probably that five. Okay, and, and probably goes up to a, where, where you're at like nine, you know, some, somewhere eight, eight, four to, four to eight or something like that. Or, okay. Okay. All right, aerobics. This was, aerobics is a term that Dr. Kenneth Cooper in the 70s came up with and, and really was a, um, a, just a form of activating the heart and breathing with activities a little bit more. And um, the, uh, Dr. Cooper was great. He had a clinic out in, um, he still does, the Cooper Clinic still exists. It was a training facility for the Dallas Cowboys. They had ways of really trying to take them through a lot of uh, scientific testing of athletes. And, and, and it really did get the attention of a lot of the other um, uh, professional teams and a lot of training type things that have happened since then. But, but he wrote the book called Aerobics, if you go back in the 70s. And of course, back then, jogging and was just getting going and running events were going and 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 you know it was it was it was more than your typical go to the the gym and lift weights and 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 so people started moving and and it was it really did set up a a trend that 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 really did uh kind of go so aerobics is good you're just using your heart and lungs breathing if you take aerobics to the point of your maximum you start becoming anaerobic. You start creating acid in your muscles, lactate, and that's no good. And you know, unfortunately, people can start creating lactate sometimes early when they're not in condition. So it takes time to move the scale of what you can do aerobically before you, you, you start hitting that point where from this point on, I'm producing lactic acid. I, mean, I ran track in, in high school and hated some of those events. The coaches would push you to that point of, of lactic acid. That was not a fun feeling. Um, we all need to lift more. We need to use our muscles and weights are, are helpful, but it's movements of different ways. Squats, um, chest presses, um, deadlifts, rowing, um, uh, lunging, the, the both um, forward and, and lateral lunging, uh, the uh, different shoulder pressing. Um, resistant exercises have not only been found to be healthy for people, but it, but they, um, there's, um, I mean, anyone can do it. People say, oh, I, I, I can't, you know, do it because, you know, I, I, I can't stand up. Well, you can do it sitting down. You know, there are things obviously that we, and a lot of the, the um, when you do circuit uh, strength training, it is sitting or, or in a recumbent position. Um, so, um, but it's been found to be not only good physiologic for the body, but um, a lot of other health benefits. Um, uh, can lower blood pressure, can improve cholesterol, uh, improve insulin sensitivity. Um, all these things have, um, have, have been seen um, we see the greatest reduction of risk for those that are um, doing about 30, um, about 
30 to 60 minutes a week. So really, if you set up, you know, a couple of times a week for at least 30 minutes, you're, um, you're, you're doing type, some type of weight training. And what should you do? Well, try to figure out, you know, lifting weights in this moderate range of where, where it's uh, 40 to 60 percent of your maximum, doing about 8 to 12 reps, potentially repeating that, you know, and then moving on to different types of muscles that, that are being used, whether your legs, whether your arms or specific locations of those. Compound exercises um, are those that activate multiple, multiple muscle groups at the same time. So something like a squat or a lunge um, will activate a lot of different, both back, leg, arm muscles, core muscles as you're doing it. If you add weights to that and do a curl at the same time as you're doing it, you're combining another, another movement. Um, so these compound exercises you know, basically activate multiple muscles at the same time. Isolation muscles, I just want to work my biceps, you know, I'm curling and then, you know, letting it out so I can work one muscle group at a time. Obviously, to work other muscle groups at a time, I've got to bring it out to the side or out beside me or above my head. Each time it goes into another position, you're, you're, you're working a different set of muscles. Um, so um, there's a difference between isometric and isotonic um, muscle strengthening. Isometric is basically like what you see here with a plank being done. You're, everything is staying in the same position for the period of time that the person is holding that. And of course, you know, it's based on how long you're holding that, but you're not, your muscles aren't moving at the time they were moving to get there, but they were, and moving to get out of that position, but the but but not while you're doing it. Um, whereas isotonic, you have two types. You have a concentric, basically where the the muscle is shortening, and then basically as it's lengthening. So there's two types, of, you know, of ways. So it's that pushing out against something and then slowly letting it back pushing out on something, whether you're using legs, arms, you know, chest, chest press, all these different types of things. Um, the weights don't have to be heavy. I mean, it's just, it, it clearly is what is your, what is comfortable for you and, and being in that, that, you know, 40 to 60 percent range of that and doing multiple reps. I think that's, that's the key. Um, bands. This is, um, Another way you're you're traveling, you're at home, um, you know, you're you're sitting, and and um, you you're wanting to do these bands are ways you they're they're portable, inexpensive. Um, you can continue the exercises that you're doing here at home. Uh, you can follow YouTube class. Yeah, that's what my wife does. She she puts on a her favorite little recording and does actually the same thing every time that I, I, I get real bored with that but but I, but I, but but that's what she likes to do she's comfortable with it it's 30 to 45 minutes and she's working her bands in multiple multiple ways um, this is an interesting um, the, how do you increase movement without exercise I, I, I thought this was an interesting con concept what's called neat non exercise activity and then they had to have some for tea so it's thermogenesis i mean but but neat these are daily activities that you do at home that you're just doing more movement i mean it's it, it is the clean up things at home taking out the garbage cans but if you're taking out the garbage take out one bag at a time or or you're bringing in groceries you know go back and forth to the car you know bringing in one bag at a time you're, you're doing, you're adding distance, you're adding use. Um, the, if you've got stairs, obviously, in the house, use the stairs and, and, and do things. Stand up more as you're doing things. If you don't always have to sit to watch TV or, or, or do things. Uh, I, I, the neat concept was, was interesting. It's just, said, it's just kind of this fun thing of keep moving. I mean, I, 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 I do it if I go to the grocery store. I just park further away. 
or you know just adding adding these steps um but you know you're always moving you're always coming up with things but don't have you're, you're getting out of that sitting position and and activating your muscles so um i thought that was neat other so so just get moving keep moving personal trackers i mean amazing what fitness apps and, and things are, are able to do um, the um, more than just um, step counters now uh, they, they can you can actually record what you've done at certain times of the day uh, it it their GPS a lot of them now too that that can even show your route that you went walking um, you know I know in my phone I, I have not only the pedometer but I can actually hit it for a walking trail and we can figure out the distance of that walking trail as we go from that, from just hitting uh, that on my, 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 I don't have a, a watch. I usually don't wear one. I think for swimming purposes, one time I, I, I probably will, but they are right now they're at that about $250 mark. And, and so you, I, I've got to make sure I'm going to use it if I, if I purchase something like that. Steps, these step counters. Uh, what does the science really say? Um, I, um, you know, in general, Americans don't walk much. They three to four thousand steps a day, and most most everybody is under under the five thousand, which is basically more sedentary. Um, so the ten thousand, you know, is not what's needed. This is what the story behind the the ten thousand. This was on the original step counter that that was put in Japan, and that's the symbol for ten thousand. So everybody thought that was the number of steps we needed to take. And, and so they, they started that. But actually, uh, this group, it, was a, it, it became kind of a marketing tool. Um, it was not, there was not the science with it at the time. But they were just getting going. They were getting people moving. But this is basically the science. If you are 18 to 59, um, you, you probably should be seven to 10,000 steps daily. If you're over 60, six to eight thousand, and if for um, uh, and and the or you know somewhere in that range, the um, yeah I'm not sure why they 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 isolated the women there, <laughs> the 62 to 101, but I think it's just all the benefits um, that uh, that's 7,500, uh, but this was from Lancet Public Health, uh, and 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 that was the the scientific recommendation. Swimming, I, I love swimming. I, I mean, and, and there's somebody else here who likes swimming too. So, so the, the um, but I think it's a, um, the water is about, you know, a thousand times denser than air. To travel through it, obviously it's un, unnatural. You have to learn that movement, you know, to be able to go through, to, to swim like a fish instead of swim like you're plowing <laughs> or pushing the water around. Um, the buoyancy, you learn how to breathe, breath hold, uh, those types of things are going on. You're using all of your muscles. So you've not only, you're, you're not only getting the training of the muscles during the time, but you're actually getting range of motion, you're getting flexibility. Um, so in a 30 to 45 minute workout, I can get not only the physical sides of, of swimming, but I actually get this, the psychological side. It makes me feel good. And so I, I get lap happy. I mean, I, I, I really do. I, I get out there. Now, there's other ways in the water. Water aerobics. I mean, same thing, movement, walking, um, use of a lot of different muscles. We, we actually found that um, people, uh, when we were measuring things, we did a, a, a brief phase three uh, program over at, at Premier. And it's those that were involved in water aerobics that were having the biggest improvements on the BIA measurements over two months. I mean, they were activating all of their muscles. And it was, it was fascinating to see what water aerobics, you know, was doing. So I think that twisting, that walking, combination of it, lots of movements, unweighting the joints. It's, it, of course, it's closed out there today, <laughs> both, both bulls and covered because it's cold. And even though it's heated, they, they have covered it. Biking, we've got lots of opportunities. Obviously, you can't bike a lot on uh, roads in this town. You will, is too dangerous. 
but we do have trails and, and of course our, our St. Mark's Trail is a is a, a great place to go. Racket sports, lots of movement. People are really um, you know, uh, talking to me about about that. I mean at all ages. The people that have been uh, professional tennis players are playing uh, um, the the pickleball <laughs> tournaments now and, and, and really enjoying it. So anything that gets you moving with a racket Water skiing, this is my favorite too. This is the, the, the reason I, I swim. This is my why for a lot of things. I like to, to be in shape to be able to water ski. This is um, the, um, the, the Regina Jacques, who's the women's world record holder in slalom. And she, she has been winning every year and keeps, she had knee surgery a year ago and recovered from that and is back to uh, full, but water ski and what I do at, at those days, this is not me, but, but, but it's, we've done some things close, but that's what's called short line skiing. They're, they're, um, but, the, but there's six buoys, there's the entrance gate and exit gate. That boat is going between 32 and 36 miles an hour, whatever your competition speed is, and it will not move. It is just going down, it, it is set by GPS it will stay at that speed no matter what the skier does behind it. So all the driver has to do is steer straight in between the guide buoys in the middle, and the skier goes side to side. And of course, having to speed up and turn, you know, that, but, but it is, a, it, it's, it's my, um, uh, my, my, my passion, if you will. I, I, I love just getting on the water and doing uh, that. Getting outdoors is, is, is just so important. We had a talk uh, here I did it on birding, did one even on mentioning a lot of different parks. You can combine a lot of different things, get out, go for a walk, uh, take your phone, take binoculars. Um, the, on your phone, I'd mentioned for birding, a Merlin app. And it's, everyone should download a, a Merlin app and a Seek, S-E-E-K app. But Merlin will identify not only the birds if you take a picture of it, but we'll identify them by their song, their, their, their sound. So it'll uh, go and identify what you're hearing. And that is so fun. I mean, I, 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 the, the seek, you always come up with a plant or a flower you can't identify, pull out seek, it'll take a picture of it, it will identify it. That's from Nas National Geographic did seek and, um, and Merlin is by Cornell ornithology and and they're they're both wonderful wonderful apps what is a met we we, we always we, we talk about um, you know one metabolic equivalent is the amount of oxygen you consume sitting at rest okay so that's one met two mets is twice that amount so you're you're this is what happens when you start doing activity so it's compared with rest this particular activity requires two mets. The three mets, obviously, four on up. So, so for light to, to intense, light and intensity aerobic activities, it's between that one and three mets you're, you're using. Moderate will be between three up to towards six. And then vigorous, six and more, you know, metabolic. So you're really consuming, needing oxygen, your, need, your muscles really asking for it. And um, so that's a met. Now, if you want to be calculate what your physical activity is and how much, how many, you can combine your mets with activity with a formula that, that and then the minutes activity, but you, you, you have to almost look up my activity for let's say biking, but I'm doing light to moderate biking, you know, what is the metabolic equivalent for that? And, and so, the, so it may say two mets, let's say. So you put that into the calculation and then your, your weight, you have to know your kilograms. This is one for, for kilograms, but then um, times the minutes of activity as, and, and then over 200. The, the frustrating thing is you, you'll get on a treadmill, it'll, it'll be calculating your METs, and you know how 
frustrating that is. It, it just, it's like you've been on it forever and you've burned 50 calories. You know, I mean, you've seen it. I mean, it's just like, that is the reason. I'm telling you, when we talk about weight and weight loss, the majority of it is through what you're eating, not what you're doing. It's good to be active, but you're not going to burn the calories. So we'll talk about that. Do not, you cannot just act like you're going to go burn off this weight. That's not going to be the way it happens. It has to be with adjustment in nutrition and a reduction of calories that are taken in. Uh, stretches, all very important. Better circulation, better flexibility, posture, um, improves athletic performance. If I am out of position or on, on my skiing or swimming, it's, it's not as efficient. Uh, it, it doesn't go away. Um, it does, stretching helps to relieve uh, tightness, tension, those pressure points. Um, and it, and it, even stretching is great for healing injuries and even preventing injuries. I, I, I like, at home, I, I have a mat, I have a roller. I, I love using it, and you can roll. I, my low back loves a roller. I can use it on tilt and do it on the side. I can do uh, range of motion type things from different positions that even are rolling that muscle over uh, and, and, and massaging it even more with, but I like the soft roller. I have a harder roller, and even if I've got pressure points with it, I've got lacrosse balls that, that you can lay on a lacrosse ball and, and relieve a, um, a, you know, a pressure point over time. It will finally give, but th this is a softer, kinder, thing is it's the the massage gun and these are very good and they're not very expensive um you know i think this one may may have been like 70 dollars here but they're you can really it's hard to rub something yourself it's easy just turn it on up intensity put it on there press it in and so it's a you know the massage guns are are, are very helpful for relieving a, a pressure point it's important before activity um, to have proper nutrition and hydration. Uh, don't skip meals, um, especially breakfast. And I just just not recommended. Uh, just we should all have breakfast. Um, how is exercise medicine? Well, the the data shows that we can reduce the risk of recurrent breast cancer 50% by someone being involved in exercise or physical activity. It lowers the risk of colon cancer to begin with, 60%, reduces Alzheimer's, 40%, reduces heart disease and high blood pressure, 40%. It reduces uh, the risk of stroke, 27%, and it lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes, uh, 58%. It's actually fascinating. Activation of muscle is one of the most important things for treatment of um, type 2 diabetes along with the nutrition but people sometimes do the nutrition side or expect just the calorie loss with those Zimpics. they've got to activate their muscles and and if they're going to get rid of the the um, glucose um, that they get rid of the insulin um, uh, resistance so is exercise a drug well some people think that that's what athletes are trying to do create these endorphins it does I mean, it, it, it can create this natural opioid. When your runners will talk about um, that at certain levels of activity, I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 I'm not sure how much my physical activity is creating opioid <laughs> endorphins within me. I, I, I don't know. I, I send the ache, ache a little bit afterwards, but the, um, but. Speaking of aching, the, there is this reduction of inflammation. It activates the, the um, T regulator cells that, of, of the immune system that do try to reduce inflammation. So, so um, and does exercise heal? Well, it does improve circulation and allows uh, particular wounds to heal. In fact, wound clinics uh, you know, activating that particular muscle uh, reduce or, or improve the 
healing rates by 25% uh, as they were doing it. it. It stimulates hormones of the body and, and good hormones, the, the dopamine, the feel good. Um, you know, we all have this pain and pleasure uh, within our brain and, and a lot of it is balanced out. We, we, our brain likes to keep a certain amount of homeostasis or, or keep those levels. I, I, I'm going to do a talk probably this year on, on a book called Dopamine Nation. And just we'll talk, we'll dive a little bit more into dopamine. But it is fascinating, you know, pain, pleasure, addiction, uh, likes, dislikes, things. It, it, our brain, brain is fascinating how it does it. But, but exercise helps that dopamine level to stay higher. Um, the um, serotonin, which helps um, for sleep, um, can 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 be helpful. So, but not exercise right before you expect to go to sleep. And so you need to separate. That time is good to do it in the early evening, but not late evening. Uh, exercise boost testosterone for men's can bo boost estrogen for women. I mean, a lot of a um, lot of positive things. Exercise and bone strength. Um, we know when the the astronauts go into space and they 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 don't have any uh, resistance against things. They start losing both muscle and bone as they're as they're up there. They have had to work on ways that they do activity and exercise in, in space. They're doing um, a certain degree of resistant uh, 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 movement of of weights. And there's reasons. Well, in general, you know the that I found for for bone health um, and maintaining bone health, the key is exercise, um, not, um, not just what we eat, the calcium we get or the vitamin D. It actually is our muscle and muscle strength. It's using the muscles, pull our bones, the bones support us as we're doing things. Uh, it's use of our muscles and bones the most important. And of course, what we don't want to get, we don't want to get the, um, the fall. You know, why do we fall? Well, we get frail, feeble, we fall, then we fracture, and then it's fatal. So we don't want those, those things. Um, so we want the muscle tone, we want the muscle, the bone strength, muscle strength. Um, and then we can pay attention a bit to nutrition. Now it's not, calcium is in a lot of different things. It's, it's, it's in fruits, vegetables, whole grains. It's not just in milk, and mo most time milk is mostly fortified uh, milk. You have the calcium with that, but you also have vitamin D. The negative with milk is you get the casein, and, and that it creates an acidic environment and actually kind of breaks down bone. It erodes the bone. So you get a, almost a balance. You drink a glass of milk, and you kind of got this good and bad going. At the same time, you get a net toss-up, you know, it's just, you know, and you really didn't get the positive effect you thought you were going to get. The negative effects can actually happen from sodas, um, you know, colas, a lot of refined sugars, high sugars, charred foods, lots of charring, grilling, um, salt, you know, animal fats, alcohol. So all of those are just <laughs> eroding, eroding the bone. You know, it's, 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 it's really sick. So, you know, so once again, it's not that the bones become brittle um, because of um, because of not eating something or eating something. It's, it's a lot of times because we're just we're 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 getting into areas where we're going to start falling and breaking them. And um, so, build muscles by using muscles. I mean, we do. This has been our clearly our experience watching the the BIA measurements. Sarcopenia, which is really a low muscle state, is, is we're really finding that's the hardest thing to overcome. And, and, um, but we're seeing some of it and really going to need the help of the dietitians to help us um, trying to figure out all our different sources of, of the amino acids for building muscle coming from both plants and, and, um, and, and meat and um, just animal products. The, the body will build muscle in response to the activities it saw the day before. 
overnight when we sleep, our muscles build, they repair, we get ready for the next day. So, so, so it is good. What you're doing today is, is building uh, for tomorrow. The quality of muscle, this has been an interesting area. And, and, and you know, it's, it's not just the presence of muscle, but, you know, what is the strength? How lean is it? You know, and, and, and this leanness affects really where we go from aerobic to anaerobic. And this is measured by what's called a VO2 max uh, measurement. But that's where that lactic acid production is really kicking in. When our muscle is marbled, we, we run into a lot of problems. In fact, our lactate can begin happening much sooner. People with insulin resistance will have measurable lactate le levels that are elevated at rest. They're not doing any activity. They're already anaerobic. They're already having to use both. And that's, that is the, the marbling is fat. It is where things are getting stored. When insulin levels are up and are staying high, insulin starts forcing storage into the muscles, into the fat, into the liver, and into the heart. I mean, all of those things. So our high insulin levels ongoing are not good. And, and so, so our sensitivity, insulin sensitivity has been this topic I've been recognizing has been coming at us in cardiology more than anything else. I've shown this before. Um, the upper slide shows a, a, a 40 year old triathlete, nice lean muscle, looks beautiful. And that's a 70 year old's a triathlete at the bottom. That's, that's what I want to be. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, now the in between is a 74 year old with sarcopenic obesity. They have a high fat state and they have a low muscle state. Look at the muscle, it's, it's so marbled with other, other fat. This slide actually, you know, just got me and, and keeps making me think of that when I, when I see that. And that's what's happening to people. Look at the, look at the bone. Compare the bones of a, somebody uses their, the bone is right here and it's small. It's just gotten, and compared to this nice, thick, hard, good bone. So we got this small bone, fat, fatty muscle, this is not good. And this is trying to reverse that is where we're at right now with a lot of, lot of, lot of conditions. So we just, you know, th th this slide has motivated me more than anything else to try to figure out insulin resistance and what's going on. And actually, we've had, we've had a few people say, I don't want to be steak. You know, so it's, 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 it's really, we, we, we can motivate down here with different things, but it, we all need sleep. Um, that's where, you know, we repair. Um, it's where we get anti-inflammatory um, hormones. Um, we, we start replenishing our, our glycogen stores all around, and even our mitochondria uh, kind of gear back up for the day. I, I, when I talk a little bit more about um, the metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. I'm, I'm going to do a deeper dive into it with you, so if, if y'all could put up with me. But, I, but it's, a, it's, it's really been a question. I've been trying to get my, my clinical answers so that I can actually help patients get better and, 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 and maybe a better way of measuring it, that we can let people know that insulin resistance is going on early. We need proper nutrition. We need activity. We need recovery. Um, your body does need fuel. And, and so there's a lot of talk of, you know, well, what, what type of fuel should we eat before we exercise? Well, well, just a nice, you know, breakfast that has, you know, the um, things to start the day. And, and when do you exercise? Do you exercise in the morning? Do you exercise in the evening? I'm, I'm kind of an evening I'm, I'm in between work and home. So I'm usually getting some type of snack. I'm usually grabbing an apple, you know, before I go, go, go do something and then getting some water 
and then um, drinking water while I'm swimming a lot um, in, in between um, sets and, and things I'm doing. Uh, during, you can actually take something with you, apple, banana, you know, things like that. Something can go with you. Or, you know, these you know, sport bars, you know, you can, um, so carbs are, you know, more thing during activity. Afterwards, um, it's just kind of a, um, about an hour after, you know, getting in, you know, the nutrition, but, but there you can get, um, uh, you know, back to getting a, a snack that, that, that may have more protein um, and, um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be the higher carb. So I think we need carbs. We burn carbs. We use carbs. People who have been in these, you know, trying to get people to avoid carbs, the second you start avoiding carbs, you start increasing fat. You, you just go up in your fat intake. And fat is harder. Number one, it's harder to break down fat. It's, it's much easier to break down carbs. Carbs per unit have four, you know, four calories per, per, per gram fat of uh, 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 carb. The, for fat, it's nine. It's already higher calorie. So, if, yeah. So it's, it's a... It's an issue. Uh, muscle growth, um, we, we, we've actually talked about trying to make sure people are getting adequate amino acids or amount per day, adequate protein. Um, in, in general, someone, let's say 200 pounds, may need 73 grams of protein daily. Um, but if you're really trying to gain muscle, you're really at a low state, it may need twice that much in different ways. And that's where we're probably going to need the dietitians to help us try to figure out ways to get in a, um, in a lot. If someone is active, if someone is exercising, they're typically following more wellness along the way so that you make better choices of nutrition as you're exercising. Um, if you're not feeling well, you're just depressed or tired or didn't sleep right, guess what? That next day we tend to choose poorly. You know, we, and, and it's been shown that go for the simple sugars much quicker and may, may take in quickly about 500 extra calories. And once again, once you take in 500 extra calories, try to figure out how to start reducing that or you're not going to burn it off. Um, you know, um, exercise for weight loss. It just, it's just, it's, it's much faster to lose weight adjusting your dietary, dietary approach. Uh, Jim Fix years ago was getting everybody thinking that you could run 10 miles a day and you could eat anything you want to. That's, that was, and, and, and he died. He, he died suddenly. And um, so Jim it, it was not looking out for, he, he really thought he could outrun a, a, a bad diet. And the answer is you can't. You, you, you cannot, it will, it will cut, you'll have an injury. You know, you keep the same dietary approach. You know, this happens to athletes, um, football players, everything else. They go for a while or then they're out of football. You're out, you're not doing an individual sport anymore. And what happens? They just start gaining weight. That the average lifespan of a NFL lineman at one point was only fifty five years old. It's a you know, a short, short lifespan. Uh, mentioning real quick, ultramarathon endurance stuff, you know, some people can do it. You can watch it or barely watch it. That, watching Julie Moss collapse multiple times in one of the early Ironman triathlons was just painful. She, she passed out and would fall out and crawl and kind of finally made it to the finish line. And guess what? That's not good for the heart. <laughs> they, they've actually looked at the athletes that have done that they're filled with calcium in, in their vessels, their coronary calcification score. They've injured their vessels multiple times, have had to heal. There, there's probably this better sweet spot that we talk about with moderate activity. And it's, a, it's better, it's, 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 you know, if someone wants to be competitive, fine, but they're likely going to do harm to some degree in injury. You know, those, and, and so competition um, is participation is one thing, competition is a whole different story. 
and these people that are competitive ultra athletes, they're, they're, they're healthy, but over time they're also doing, there's enough inflammation and harm. They, there's measurable heart injury with troponin levels at different stages in a Ironman triathlon. It's been watched and followed. So there's this Goldilocks, not too much, you know, not too little, just right. And I think that's what we, we really all, you know, want, want to get, get to. Um, so let's see, last few slides here. Um, if you can't walk, use a chair. Figure out things you can do in a chair, whether chair yoga, chair aerobics, those types of things. And, and I think the use of bands uh, can be done. So in summary, you know, eat well. I've always, you know, we need more whole food, plant-based nutrition. We need less meat, dairy, cheese, eggs. We need less animal food. We're just 50% reduction there. Um, move more. And clearly, we've talked about it a lot. Sleep well, because that's where we restore things overnight. And love more. You know, that's that that's a uh, Dean Ornish. Uh, those those four. Um, and and I I agree. I, I think I think, gosh, if this world loved more, we we we'd, we'd be much much easier place to live. All right.